Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, nice to see everybody on such a lovely sunny day outside, and we're all stuck inside at a network meeting. <laughs> Um, so I'm Sue Denver and I work for a company called Winning Pitch and we deliver business support contracts for local authorities right across the country. So my baby at the moment is Boost. So Boost is Lancashire's growth hub and um, it's, it's kind of funded through Lancashire County Council. So Boost is really Lancashire County Council. So the growth hub brings government funding to small businesses so that's the route for government to get funding out to you guys um, by means of running sessions like like this network meeting this afternoon um, the programs here until the end of december next year 2021 uh, it's here to help lancashire businesses grow um, and this network meeting is being brought on behalf of a program called the growth support program now, it's for um, startup businesses or for p businesses who have got a business idea, but they've kind of not yet dipped the toe in the water. So you might be an individual, you've got a business idea, so <laughs> what do I do with it? You know, how do I create my own business? Um, so what do I do? So that's when you come to us and we help you through that business planning process. And we deliver things like um, workshops, masterclasses on different topics, uh, you get a little bit of one-to-one -one support. We work with Susie uh, from Unique Ladies and we deliver lots of these different network sessions. And it's just kind of getting the message out and getting you guys to, to work together really. Um, so if, you, if you're a startup business or you've got a business idea and you're in the room today and you don't know what to do, you need some help from us, I'm going to put our contact details in the chat. So you can send us an email. Um, I'll put it up there soon. Um, then you can send us all an email and then we'll come back to you and, uh, and we'll just, you know, help you, talk you through what, what the programme does really. Uh, so I'm going to um, pass you over to Susie now, who's going to host the session. So that's the lovely Susie Orr from Unique Ladies. Um, we're going to be hearing from Rebecca Ramsey later on in the session. Um, so a really good, uh, a really good inspirational uh, talk from Rebecca. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I've heard it several times, but I'm looking forward to just to listening. And it's just that educational piece that everybody needs to know about. So I'm going to pass you on to Susie now. I'll shut up and I'll put our details in the chat. Uh, so that's enough from me. Thanks. Thanks, Sue, and welcome everybody. Um, can I just um, ask, is there anybody on here who has never networked before? No, that's brilliant. So we, we do this, we call these sessions networking for beginners, but the, we have all sorts of people that, that come on them and we run them like we run, I run Unique Ladies Networks, as does Wahida. Nice to see you on here, Wahida. Um, so what we generally do is have a, a little bit of an educational piece. Um, we'll do round the table networking and we usually break out into a couple of different breakout rooms But because we're quite a small group, we're going to just do it as one So I'll guide you around the room. I'll sort of you know We'll do it one at a time and we'll give you a couple of minutes just to introduce yourselves to everybody else here um, Let us know um, who you are uh, what your business is if there's anything you're looking for from a business perspective if there are any connections that you want to make and what I would say is be as specific as possible. So if you know you want to get in touch with, um, oh gosh, who, who can I say? Um, someone who makes cakes. I just, there's a, there's a, um, a cake maker in, in Chorley, um, Eat My Logo. They do logos on cakes. If you want to know, if you want to know someone who makes cakes, ask for, you know, I want to know someone, I want to get in touch with Eat My Logo in Chorley because, if you're very, very specific, the chances are that someone else within the room might know someone who might know someone who can get you that introduction. But if you just say, I want to meet, um, you know, women between 20 and 40 in Lancashire, it's, it's sort of too wide of a net that you, you're casting. So try and be specific. Um, networking's a slow burn. It's not... Um, one of those things where you come to a network and you'll do you, you, you know your million dollar deal it doesn't happen like that it's all about building relationships so in 
when normality resumes in normal times or whatever the new normal will be when i run networks i try and have a coffee with the women that come to our networks so i can get to know who they are and what you know you, you build the relationships up um, my advice also is if you're booking on networks like this get to know the people that are running them so you know sue's a, a great contact and a great connector um, and rachel as well so if, if you are going to a network whether it be physically or on zoom and you know that you want to meet you know restaurant owners or whatever it happens to be i would take the time before you go to your network to speak to the organizer and say this is what i'm looking for can you put me in that group or sit me with those people and um, just think a little bit about it because the people that are facilitating the networks whatever they are should be helping you and encouraging to, you to grow your business so should work with you and if you know the sort of people the sort of businesses that you want to connect with ask for them the more you are you know it's that old adage isn't it if you don't ask you don't get just ask to sit with those people might might well be that there isn't anyone there but again another um sort of top tip is never dismiss anyone because you might look at this room as an example and think oh well you know none of those people fit what i'm looking for but you don't know what the husbands or what the wives do or who they know so that's why it's important to get to know people and let them get to know what you're looking for. And then they'll, they can say to you, actually, uh, you know, I can't help you, but I know a man who can. Um, I have a, a really great example of that. I went to a network years ago. So my, my background was IT and telecoms and I had quite a big target working for Virgin Media Business. And I went to a network in Wigan early one morning. It was a small network. And a lady sat next to me who did some sort of makeup. And my initial thoughts are, I mean, I'm a woman, I like makeup, but I, you know, I'm not gonna get any business from her. This, this lady's of no use to me. But I, because I am who I am, I sat with her and I had a cup of tea and chatted. Her husband was head of IT for Trafford Council. And I got a routine, which was for me, it was, it, it was one of, it's a great story because, you know, I would never have thought that talking to a lady who, who did makeup would end up with me getting into a, a you know, really, really good um, connection. So don't dismiss anyone and, um, and spend some time connecting with everyone in the group. So I add, I'll invite you all to put your contact details in the chat. Um, if you've got links to your, your websites, things like that, share it all in the chat. And I think Rachel will um, send that chat around to everybody after the event. So you can, you know, you'll have a, a list of everyone's numbers and things like that. But connect with everybody on LinkedIn, social media and stuff like that afterwards. Um, it's particularly useful if you're a new business and a, a small business to just, you know, grow your contacts and things like that, up your likes and things on Facebook. So they're my... Um, my tips. Um, I think what we're going to do now is go straight into the, the round the table networking. I'm not going to ask Rebecca to, to speak as yet because Rebecca's our inspirational speaker. So we'll introduce Rebecca at the end. When we've, when we've been around the room, um, we're going to have a couple of minutes just comfort break where you can take yourself off video um, just go and get yourself another brew and then when you come back we'll introduce Rebecca and she'll speak for about 20 minutes and there will be some um, Q&A time afterwards if anyone's got any questions for Rebecca. So um, shall we start off, Tina's I know you, Wahida, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself, unmute yourself, um, introduce yourself, we'll give everybody a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit, a, a bit about who you are and what you do and what you're looking for in terms of business. Hey, yeah. Hello, everybody. I actually had a feeling you're going to throw me into this <laughs> first one. And I've been thinking, what do I say? What do I say? Well, I do know what I say. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Wahida and I'm one of the franchisees uh, for Unique Ladies. I run the Unique Ladies Networking Group in Bradford. I've been doing it for about a year now and I really enjoy it. I've never networked before, so it's the first time I've ever done anything and it's amazing. I live in Lancashire though and in Lancashire um, I was studying when I started to attend Unique Ladies meetings uh, because I started to sell Tropic uh, skincare. A lot of you would know about Tropic, some people wouldn't, but it's um, a national, um, nationally 
based uh, skincare, which is vegan, eco-friendly, um, cruelty-free, and and does have some some healing, not powers, but effect on people according to their skins. And I love it for personal reasons, and the ethos of it is amazing. I ran into Susie uh, in one of the meetings because I went there to introduce myself, and I ended up um, becoming a franchisee for Bradford. I've been attending these meetings and hosting these meetings and I love them. Um, the reason why I'm on this meeting today for Blue Slagshire, um, every meeting you go to, you learn something new. I remember I went to um, the Costco meeting that we had in um, is it St. Helens and I'd never been to Costco before and it was amazing. I saw that, you know, the opportunities there, if we go out there and shop, it's so much better. And I've been able to sort of introduce myself to other people, open up to other people. And leading to from all leading from all the events throughout this year, I've completed my degree now, and I feel like doing something for my area. I live in Briarfield, which is at the borders of North Yorkshire, um, quite a deprived area, Pendleborough Council. <clears throat> there are some businesses running, uh, but I wanted to help uh, the community, and decided to. Well, my idea is to run a domestic uh, cleaning company or a cleaning company to help not just domestic, not just domestically, but commercially as well. And I'm here today because I'm looking for some help from Boost Lancashire. <laughs> I need to know how to start. It was easy. The, the, the unique ladies was easy because Susie had all the setup and all we had to do was just follow the leader. And that's exactly what we've done. But when you go out on your own, you do need some kind of guidance and at this point i feel even though uh, up till now i have been speaking to susie on and off and she's been a great help but there's some things that i need to go to people that know what to do how to do so so today i'm here for that reason that's a little bit about me brilliant thanks wahida and i think i would want to ask you just to share a story because it's a networking story and it's um it's topical as well um when you came to me to say that you need and this is a real strange one but this is how networking works <laughs> when you came to me to say that you needed some body bags you want to share that story yeah yeah i do i actually do that a lot at the moment because there's a lot of new people that are joining into the um with the, with the whole pandemic people have been looking for ways to to network and zoom has been a great way of of joining people and there's a lot of new people not understanding networking you know this is a, a quite a strange one because in our religion and it, it's a you're not allowed to to burn a body you're not allowed to um to do anything that's obviously that's not ethical towards the religion but burning is a big sin and what happened was when the when the pandemic uh, numbers the covid 19 numbers were really high there was a the news going around on whatsapp people tend to share whatsapp not realizing what they're sharing and how they're sharing it and what it could cause uh, the chaos it could cause in a community and somebody shared a video where a gentleman claimed that um in a london hospital there were i can't remember the number of bodies but there was a big number of bodies i think it were above uh, 30 or something and the the the, the hospital is saying that if you don't bring body bags we're going to have to burn the bodies and they're all muslims now that caused a, a huge chaos uh, and a fright in the muslim community that is nationally not just in our area nationally so people are passing messages i went i listened to the message and i i didn't ignore it it was there but th i felt like i could there was nothing i could do about it i didn't know what was going on and then i got a call from somebody in my local who knows me and she said to me well we've we've spoken to a lot of people and a lot of uh, the um people the most of the people that were spoken to were gentlemen uh, that were at the the high end of um our religion so the imams or, or the counselors and then nobody is getting back to us with anything but we can't let this hospital burn the, the bodies of these muslims it's just not right and we need to do something. So, well, I understand that, but what can I do? And she said, well, you know so many people, you do networking, you know so many people anyways, and why don't you just try something? I said, okay, let me try something. Then the first thing I did was call Susie and I said, Susie, look, this is what's happened. And 
I've, I've turned to you because I know you know a lot of people because you network and I'm hoping that um, you might be able to help me. And she said, well, do you know what? I know somebody uh, from a, a long time ago. I think you went to school together or something like that. Was it Susie? Was there an old friend? And she said he has a funeral uh, house and there are other people as well that she knows and I personally could remember uh, Susie because the first meeting I went to was at Liana Champ that she's a director of one of the funeral houses and she um, she does a great job so I thought I'll ask Susie because I didn't have Liana's number and I'll ask Susie she gave me a couple of numbers she said let me ask around and then I'll get back to you she got back to me and she said well this, this gentleman's number and speak to him so I called him and I told him that we're in a bit of a need uh, not a bit of a need uh, we're, we're sort of desperate for help and and I also called the the mosque in, Lon in London the funeral director at the mosque he told me what was going on and he said that it wasn't like they were going to burn him so that was false information the information was that the nurse had given them had wrongly said that you can't you can't take the bodies if you without the bags we will burn them but that was a, a fault from a mistake that the nurse had made so obviously somebody from from the muslim religion came from the chapel came back and sent a video out saying that nobody is allowed to do anything that is unethical towards anybody's religion so they weren't going to burn them but they do need the body body bags so when i called him he said well i've been i've been calling around a lot of people have been calling around even in london in luton in london wherever in london wherever people have been trying to get in contact but he wasn't able to get a hold of any body bags when I spoke to this gentleman, bless him, he had 40 bags. At the time, he promised me 20, but it was very quiet around here. And then when we got round to getting down to all the details, nitty gritty of it, of the, the legalities of it and how legit the whole case was, um, it took us about a week to find out all the details uh, back and forth. And we, he ended up donating 10 bags. He sent three to Bradford. He sent seven to um, London and he didn't even, first, first he said he'll, you know, he'll just charge what the cost price is. And then he said, you know what, it's a donation from me. And out of all the people that we know, all, all it was, it was just funny that I, I never thought that I'd be able to do anything for the community, but out of all the people that are all so connected, um, a unique ladies network was able to provide something that was so important for my community so networking is it, it, you might think that you're not you're not getting anything out of it but you never know you never know what might happen and when you might need them and the other thing that that sort of shows is that networking starts when you're at school really because if you if something happens in in any sort of situation you were at school with someone you know who was a solicitor and you need a solicitor that's the first person you're going to go to isn't it you're going to go and ask somebody you know because you've already got the relationship and um okay, Carl Pena, who, who's the funeral director I I knew from being a teenager actually I, we didn't go to the same school but he, he was just one of those guys that was around and he was lovely and you know we we contacted I, well I contacted a couple of funeral directors but they were all very busy and no one bothered to get back but he did which I thought was very credible so thank you for sharing that Wahida. Um, Hans has messaged me and he's just had to go and take a call or make a call to a client but he's going to try and get on um, later he's, he's, um, I don't know what Hans does but they've got some issues with the system or something so um, he'll probably jump back on later um, let's go to um, Alison admin alchemist welcome Alison hi um, I, know, I know Sue and I've I know you, Susie, but I've not um, met properly. Uh, lovely to meet you all. Um, so I was made redundant on the 31st of July and the bottom fell out of my world. It was horrendous. Well, I, I was actually told on my birthday that I was going to be made redundant, uh, but it happened on the um, 31st of July. And I went on a coaching, uh, not coaching, a career boot camp and while I was on it, I just had this idea that why don't I get all the um, experience that I've had over the years and put it all together and set up as a virtual assistant. So that's what I've done. So uh, admin and alchemist. Uh, so admin is um, the work that needs doing to 
keep a business going and then the alchemist creates um, something better through magical powers. So it's, I like to create order out of chaos in admin. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've had a few different, um, I started off as a trainee accountant, but I never got there. Um, worked in a radio station, I've worked for an image consultant and I had my own business, which was um, a gift boutique. I had that for 18 years. And um, I was actually called, um, well, I won the EVA Award for Retailer of the Year in 2011. Um, and it was, I never thought I'd win. So I just got an old dress out, the wardrobe. I so wish I'd like got a really good dress and bumped it up, but never mind. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm back to, it feels like being back to square one, really. Um, I've got three clients. I probably need about eight or nine. Um, it's nice to be able to choose the clients you work with. And I love variety. So at the moment, I've got an interior designer, um, an executive coach, and somebody who deals with medical equipment. And I do different things for each one of them. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, as I say, redundancy was horrendous. It was, and it wasn't handled well. But to be honest, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I wish I'd done this um, the minute I, I gave up my shop. I, sh I should have cut the last seven or eight years out, but I've got experience through that. I've met lots of connections. Um, I haven't uh, gone out to look for clients yet. The three clients I've got came to me when they heard I was um, available. So that's nice. Um, I've got a few more to follow up. Um, and that's my story, really. That's brilliant, Alison. Well done. And redundancy is never good, no matter when it happens yeah. to you. I mean, it's happened to me a couple of times, and it's just a horrible thing. It's, but it's that it's how you deal with it, and you know, to to turn it around like that. You know, fair play to you, ten out of ten. And um, you know, just within probably six weeks, I've got a limited company and a website already done. Yeah, yeah. doing so. Brilliant. Well, I know from the groups that I run and the networks that I do. There are some really good PA all all over the northwest, and they're always busy. So I yeah. think you know if you're good at what you do, you'll you'll make a success of it. You'll you know there'll be you'll be people you know jumping up and down for things like that. Yeah, and I think COVID, although it's horrendous for a lot of people, um, and I noticed there's a travel council on here, which so my heart goes out to her. Um, but I think some businesses are, especially the smaller businesses, are doing well. Mm. bigger businesses are perhaps having to get rid of secretarial admin staff and just want somebody part-time on a few hours a week or a few hours a month so yeah. for me I think it's quite a good time um, yeah brilliant good luck with it thank you and I think we'll, we'll take a lead from there and we'll go straight to Emma and tell us all about what you what you're doing no you can't be booking very many holidays my favorite <laughs> networker is a lady who comes to, to my Bolton network who's my travel counselor so I love you guys oh who's that Sarah um Graham Sarah Graham okay yes so I'm just getting to know everybody um so, so my name's Emma Forrester um I started as a travel counsellor at the beginning of February. So what a great time to start your own business in travel. But uh, just to go back a little bit, I've um, spent my year or my, my uh, career so far in HR and recruitment. So nothing to do with travel. Um, and similar to you, Alison, I was made redundant. Um, it, I knew it was coming. I'd worked for AstraZeneca for about 10 years, um, knew that um, the end was in sight because they were moving most jobs down to Cambridge. Um, so I'd had plenty of time to sort of think about what was next. Um, but I was looking for jobs in HR and then suddenly came across a travel counsellor and uh, with a degree in languages and uh, a real passion for travel always, just suddenly thought, do you know what? I want to do something I really want to do. Why, why am I just going along the same career path? So, so I very quickly bought into travel counsellors and despite the roller coaster of a six months that I've had, I still really believe in it. I really believe it's a franchise model. So um, I'm self-employed, bought in, 
my own business but with a lot of support behind me um, and because I didn't have a background in travel I've bought into the, the full training as well um, and I still believe I've made the right decision albeit it's going to be a bit slower to um, to sort of make the um, the income that I'd projected right at the beginning but it, what it has given me time to do is um, to try and remain positive by training solidly so although i've been juggling home schooling as well for the last sort of few months i've been training wherever i can so i've been virtually dreaming of being around the world i've been you know i've been to the most beautiful places on webinars and zoom calls so that's you know there's worse things to be doing during lockdown um, so so that's me really so i started as i say um back in february and um and, and working, seeing some green shoots, really, a few bits. And like many businesses, you have to flex. So I'm booking UK travel for people. You know, it takes a long time to look for self-catering accommodation. And a lot of people are wanting that sort of thing at the moment. So really very different sort of bookings to the ones I expected to be doing. But at least it's keeping me busy and helping me to put my training into practice. Brilliant. Thanks, Emma. And from someone who uses a travel counsellor, if any of you don't, then I would connect with Emma because Sarah is the best thing that I've ever done. I, I love travel. I'm a bit like Sue. Sue's usually off, off on a cruise somewhere, aren't you? <laughs> and, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm also known as Judith Chalmers. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it is, it's a very personal service, isn't it? It's different to a high street travel agency. But, uh, and the other thing that I would say, Susie, is that I'm uh, registered with Unique Ladies in Stockport. Oh, fabulous. So, so with Joe know. and, um, and also with Helen he Wahida. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Good stuff. Well, welcome here. Thank you, Emma. Um, I was going to go to Michael, but he's disappeared. So we'll we'll wait for him to come back. Um, Sue, do you want to go next? Yes. Ed, no, not you. Sue. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing my orchestra right here. I'm, I'm like, Sue Edwards. Too many Sues. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Apologies for being late. I had trouble getting on, so it wasn't that I was just being lazy. Um, I'm Sue Edwards. I'm a garden designer by trade. Um, I was in business for over 20 years with my ex-husband, who was the landscaper of the business. Um, but following divorce, um, I went into full-time employment. I went into lecturing at Myersco College for eight years. Um, left there because they basically got rid of the garden design courses, which are now back on. Um, and went to work for Brothers of Charity, which is an organisation working with people with learning disabilities and spent several years teaching horticulture, gardening skills, that sort of thing. Um, just listening to yourselves about travel, I sold my house, I got really fed up, sold my house, quit my job, got on a one-way ticket plane, and spent six months toodling around traveling, having a blast, which I always love, because I can say for six months, I was technically homeless and unemployed. Um, Money started to dwindle as it does, so came back. Um, now I have my little flat, which I love, um, and went back to build as a charity and ended up as a team leader um, in a management position, um, overseeing people with learning disabilities living in the community. Got to August last year and thought, I'm missing, I'm missing gardens, I'm missing being outdoors. So I took the plunge last August, end of last August, a year ago, and quit my job. Thought, great, live off my savings, set a business up, come spring, I'll be laughing. Um, and we had the wettest February in history. And then as soon as we were recovering from that, the, the virus has hit. So I've literally been at home for a, a year now, getting kind of bored. So I'm just sort of building up again, trying to get some trade. It's slow nobody's thinking about designing the gardens they've done it themselves while they've been at, at home um i am in a networking group i'm in just um property and construction so it's all based around property um so i'm linked with architects um plumbers electricians that sort of thing um, but i'm always looking to network a bit more because i think it's great so that's pretty much me really 
Brilliant. So thanks for that. Um, I'm not sure if you were on when we were saying if you want to put your contact details in the chat and then everyone can connect with everybody that's on here. I'm not sure if you missed yeah. that. Or not. Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. I'll do that now. And you're in a minority today, Michael, but we're going to let you go next. Um, Mike, look, we didn't know that we'd be on a network with Michael Ball, did we? <laughs> um, you, you'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry. Hello everyone, can you hear me now? Hi, brilliant, yeah, thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. As uh, correctly pointed out, my name is Michael Ball and I'm setting out as a public speaking coach. The name of my business is, or business to be, is Speak Practice. Now in terms of my background, I'm mainly a journalist. For most of my professional career, I've worked in newspapers up to national level. I've also qualified as a teacher of modern languages, but at the moment, perhaps surprisingly, I'm working as a civil servant. Now, I've applied to reduce my hours so that I can pursue this uh, speak practice business. I'm just waiting for that to go through. And so at the moment, in the background, I'm just pulling the strings to make sure that everything is ready and in place for when the time comes. Now you may think, why do I need those sort of services? Now, the thing to remember is that what I'm doing now and what we're all taking our turns to do is public speaking. If you can do it well, if you can do it convincingly, if you can do it in a compelling manner, that will make a big difference to your business. If when you speak in public, you come across as weak, if you come across as hesitant, if you come across as without confidence, that will not help your business. If you can speak properly, confidently, and compellingly, that will be a huge advantage. Now also, given my background as a journalist, I'm also a blogger. I can write on all sorts of subjects as a copywriter, mainly perhaps for con content for websites. And in terms of what I might be looking for from people on this course or from people who they might know, potentially I need a website building because if I have my strengths, then I certainly have my weaknesses and technical things such as websites, I have not the slightest idea. So I would potentially be interested in help in setting up a website and that is nearly three minutes so i've outstayed my welcome and so i'll pass back to the hostess thank you michael that's fabulous how we how we all doing then give us all marks on our speaking <laughs> yeah everyone's everyone seems to be uh having a good go at it i know it's not easy and probably the fact that i've just said what i'm doing will make it harder for the people who are coming next, so I do feel sympathy. Cheryl. <laughs> Michael, I've got, a, I've got a great web designer as well that I can put you in touch with, but I'll connect and talk about that later. Oh, Cheryl's got company there. I have. I have. <laughs> she, can't read, she can't resist. I, anywhere I go, it's like me and my shadow. Is this all right? Because if I move, she'll follow me, and if I shut her away, she'll cry. I have one that's conked out on the floor down here, but it's the oh. same. It's absolutely fine. We're at home, aren't we? It's a strange situation. We're at home, and I usually say, if you've got to deal with animals or children or anything, put yourself on mute. Go and deal with them. It's absolutely fine. But you know, you what? What is she called? She's called Bozy. Bosie, well, Bosie's very welcome to Bosie on Boost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, hi, everyone. My name's Cheryl. And hi, Susie. It's lovely to be here. Um, I'm going to tell you what my business is. But first, I'm going to have I'm going to ask. If anyone's got any positivity in their vibes or their thinking to share, then I'd really appreciate it because I'm finding that it's a little bit lacking when I describe what it is I'm trying to do and going to do. 
um, it's a new business and it is a CIC that I'm building and my background has been in racial equality. So my business is to create like a social justice platform to create safe spaces for every single human to be able to talk about um, racism, understand conditioning and heal from negative experiences and get some clarity and some confidence over over their own life experience so that policies and procedures and the way of, of living can be uh, un understood more positively. Did you hear me? Did I come through all right? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of positivity to do that. And I think it's a, it's a oh. great thing to do because I think we all need it. It's about educating people, isn't it? Oh, Susie, thank you so, thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we do. And if more of us can have that perspective like yourself, we'd be living in a, in a more peaceful world and in a world that we're ready for, you know. We just need to be able to get, spaces where we can feel less uncomfortable yeah i agree i agree wahid has been doing something similar in in the bradford area with the unique ladies over there haven't you wahida <laughs> i have but i've been doing a lot of positive work with um people in bradford but i did lose cheryl i don't know if she everybody heard her but she went a bit robotic through her conversation so picking up i know she was talking about positive vibes so i'm picking up on that same positive work so did everybody else hear her right yeah right okay so must be my network you two should have a, have a conversation have a coffee over zoom um that'd, that'd be great yeah yes please if that's okay wahida yeah definitely what i'm going to do I, I didn't put my mobile number on i'm going to put my no mobile number on on the chat and then um it'll be easier for everybody to connect yeah brilliant thank you cheryl and good luck with it thank you um ms denver do you want to say a little bit more and then i'll i'll just do a couple of minutes as well yeah i can do um i've just put a couple of comments in the chat to different people about the uh the boost programs that we're working on because i think sue you missed it at the beginning uh when i was speaking about the the boost program so if anybody wants to just give me a quick call afterwards that's absolutely fine um cheryl we do have a lady who works on our startup program that specifically specializes in working with um cic social enterprise that type of thing so um yeah just just give me a call afterwards and i can put you in touch um so yeah so i am sue denver i've worked in lancashire with lancashire businesses since probably about 2000 uh, that's when i first joined the business links service so i worked as an advisor for them um for 11 years and then when business link closed i joined winning pitch um in 2012 so i've been here ever since working on different government funded programs i'm really passionate about why successful that they get all the support that they need and i'm just kind of passionate about helping people really and i first met susie um, going back a few years now, Susie, isn't it? It's, um, I'm quite conscious. Can everybody hear me? Because people seem to be frozen. Yeah, I think you're, you're, can, we, we could hear you. It broke up a little bit, but I think it's... Um, right. Yeah. I think I've got a dodgy connection here. I, think, I was so, going to say, I think it's your um, connection, because not, not everybody's freezing where I am. No. Right, okay. I'll be quick then. So, so yeah, so I've known Susie for quite a while, been involved with her with Unique Ladies, uh, dead passionate about what I do. One of the best things we have in common is going on holiday, <laughs> um, missing out on lots of holidays this year. Um, so Emma 
uh, quite you make me jealous where you, you're talking about all these different places you've been I should have been in Malaysia and Thailand this coming Christmas and it's been cancelled I've rebooked it for next year so let's just see if that happens I don't know um, so it's just a bit of uh, wait and see really isn't it at the moment so I'll pass you back to Susie um, like I said I've put my details in the chat so if anybody wants to give me a ring afterwards absolutely fine just please do I'd be, be good to help you Brilliant, thanks Sue. So um, just to do a, a couple of things, um, a couple of three minutes for me. I, um, I have a couple of businesses. So I founded Unique Ladies, which is a women only business network, which I know some of you ladies have, have heard of. We've now got 16 franchises. So I've also had some um, knowledge and been through the whole process of setting up a franchise and, and creating a business through franchising, learned the hard way, had some, you know, not very nice things happen, but we've got 16 franchises and I have a team of women now, with Wahida included, who are absolutely fabulous, very, very different women, unique, each of them are, are unique. Um, we run the groups very similar to this actually, um, and uh, currently they're on Zoom. They're every month, once a month um, on Zoom, and we charge just £10 a time. It's a free membership. So um, I shared the website in the chat, which is uniqueladies.co.uk. Um, as well as all the, the ones, the, the 16 that we have are all Northwest based. Bradford's sort of the exception going into West Yorkshire. And um, as well as those, I run a national one. So I launched it last month. So we had ladies on from sort of Essex, Northampton. Um, and I'm going to carry on building on that. That was something that happened through Zoom because we were doing so many Zooms and it doesn't matter. I had someone from Scotland come on the Bolton group. And I thought, hang on, that's, you know, we're networking. So if we all want to grow our businesses and we don't want to just grow it in, in Lancashire and, and surrounding counties, then why not just do a Zoom that's a national one? So, um, so the next one of those is on the 8th of October. And I think um, Edwina's speaking. Edwina Curry spoke at one we did for you, so didn't she? So I think Edwina's going to be the speaker. I'm just waiting for her to, um, to confirm it. I love networking. I'm more than happy to help anybody where I can um, in terms of, you know, contacts, connections, things like that. Uh, and aside from that, my husband and I have a window business. So we have a company called Window World. Um, so we do UPVC, windows, doors, conservatories, etc. We have a branch in Liverpool and a branch in Chorley. And we've had that business, or he's had that business for 20 years. And I just sort of float in and out. But I have, he does tell me off because I don't always remember to tell people that we have Window World. I'm, I'm more entranced in um, networking which is what I love doing. So that's me, I'm Susie Orr, and I'm happy to help anybody. So please connect with me. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of networking and listening to people and giving people, you know, your time. So everybody on, on this um, network today has something, or ha has, you know, connections that will really help somebody else on here. It's just fathoming out how you do it. And it's literally by taking the time, having a Zoom over coffee, you know, having a conversation and um, and sharing on social media as well you know always share people's posts and things like that so that's me thank you um i think now that we've done that i've got some more i've got some more tips let me do a couple more networking tips while we're on networking for beginners i've got a page full of them here um Oh, this is a good one. When you go to a network, it's not, it's, it doesn't happen as much when you're doing Zoom, but when you go to a network, do not sell. Lots of people go into a network, oh, I sell, I have mobile phones, do you want to buy this, do you want to buy that? Networking isn't about selling, it's about building relationships. If you have a product to sell, that's obviously what you're gonna go there for. I, I, I go to networks to sell double glazing, but I never ever mention them. I might hand a card out that says, you know, Window World or what have you. Um, it's always be interested in the other person, get them to open up, and then, you know, the, the card will come in. And then the next time you meet them, yeah, it'll be a case of, oh, yeah, you know, did you do, you do windows or something? And it's just building up on that. So it, people think that networking is to go and sell. It's absolutely not. It's about getting to know people. So that's a real 
top tip. Um, I've got on this list as well, have plenty of business cards because generally you're leaving your business cards around. And last time we were on, I said, I've got this really good idea. And I had a photograph of my business card, which I shared in the text. In, in, and I was, I was thinking that when you print it off, when you have a look at it, it'll, you know, you'll see my business card and it didn't work. So <laughs> I dragged it over there, I put it in there. But actually when you get the text file, it doesn't come up as a business card. Um, but one thing that I've, I've said to, to everybody is take a photograph of your business card, have it in your phone, and then if ever you run out of business cards, you know, everybody's got phones now, and they just bring the photo up, save it in your favourites, and you can just scan it, text it, you know, MMS it to whoever needs your business card, and then you'll never run out of them again. So that's my, that's another top tip for you. You can all have that one from me. Um, I think now we're going to just have a quick break, a quick comfort break, and then um, we'll let Rebecca do her stuff. So if you want to just take yourselves off video, go and make yourself a cup of tea or something, and then I'll see you here in a couple of minutes. Okay, we're all back then. Rachel's not coming on video, is she? So we've just got Sue there. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Rebecca to speak. I'm just going to say a couple of things before um, before Rebecca speaks. So, if, ladies, if you've not heard of Rebecca or heard like heard of her story, you might want a tissue because she does get quite emotional. Um, but it's a true story and it's factual, and she's going to educate us all. Um, I met Rebecca. I actually messaged her on Facebook because she's very local to me and. Dylan, her son, was in the year below my daughter at school. So I knew the story um, quite some time ago. And um, unique ladies have been uh, very supportive, I think, in um, promoting uh, the cause. And Rebecca's spoken at quite a few of our groups. Um, it takes a lot of courage as a mother to sort of share a story like this. But the message is really, really important. So um, without further ado, if anybody wants to go off camera and listen to Rebecca, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes when we have speakers and uh, the stories are you know, emotional or something like that, you might be more comfortable uh, being off camera. That's absolutely fine. When um, Rebecca's finished sharing the story, will there be a sort of five, ten minutes at Q&A time? So you'll be more than welcome to... And ask any questions. We'll then do a couple of shout outs. So if anybody has anything that they want to share, any questions they want to ask about the whole session, about Boost, about anything that anyone's contributed today, then there'll be an opportunity for you to do that and then we'll wrap things up. Um, so yeah, we should be done probably by about quarter to four, something like that. So Rebecca, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my name's Rebecca Ramsey, as Susie's just said. Um, it's lovely to meet you all. I brought my talk down into three sessions. I'm already going, Susie. That's because you said I was going to get upset. Um, so I brought my, my talk down to three sessions. Firstly, I'm going to tell you what happened. Then I'm going to tell you what I did about that. And then I'm going to tell you um, like the people that I've met and the things that have come from the tragic event. So it was the 3rd of July. It was a red hot sunny day. And Dylan chose to go swimming with two friends. It was the 3rd of July, 2011. And it was the hottest day of the year. Um, he chose to go to a disused quarry, so it was a beautiful scenic place. I could totally understand why he'd chosen to go there with his friends. Uh, he was a good swimmer, he'd been swimming since the age of eight months old, so his swimming ability wasn't an issue. Um, Dylan went swimming and he was in that water for around about 20 minutes before he got into some kind of difficulty. I still, to this day, um, nine years on, don't know what actually happened to my son that day. Um, he shouted for help three times and then went underwater. And he was only underwater for a maximum of three minutes. Somebody pulled him out immediately and gave him CPR and tried the best. The police came, the ambulance came. I was at a football match with one of my other children. So I just received 
the worst call in the world. Um, your son's had an accident and you need to get home. I literally got in my mum's car and we, we drove like lunatics until we got to this set of traffic lights where I was kind of blocked off. Couldn't really do anything. There was a policeman behind us. He got out of the car and he was ready to um, give my mum a bit of a telling off, I think, for her driving. But before we had a chance to speak to her, I jumped into his car. And I said to him, the, the little boy you can hear about on your radio is my son. And I need you to get me to him as soon as possible. I remember driving down the A6, um, which is a 40 mile an hour zone. And I looked over to the policeman's speedometer and we was doing 100 miles an hour. I knew it was bad, but didn't really know how bad at that time. Um, I remember we drove past a local garage, which is literally about two minutes from my house. And um, I heard code one or code nine on the police radio. I, I, at the time, I didn't know what it meant, but obviously now I know that that meant that Dylan had lost his life. This is Dylan. He was a real young man with dreams and aspirations, with a future to live. And he wasn't doing anything wrong. He went for an innocent swim on a hot summer's day. So immediately I knew that if something like this could happen to my son, then it can happen to anybody. Because he was fit, he was athletic, he was young, he was in the prime of his life, he was a good swimmer. Um, so I knew if it could happen to him, it could happen to anybody. So I started researching about water-related fatalities, about drowning incidents, and I realised that actually as a country, we, we are losing around about 600 lives every single year in the UK. That's 400 accidental, roughly, and 200 to suicide. This can't continue is what I thought at the time, nine years ago. And sadly, this has continued year in, year out. We're losing roughly 600 people every single year. People are so unaware of the dangers about cold water shock. So I decided very, very quickly that I was going to go into schools. I was going to go into universities. I was going to go into colleges and I was just going to teach about water safety. I was going to teach anybody and everybody everything that I knew. And um, I quickly realised that there was a lot more to, to drowning than just cold water shock or just drowning and um, undercurrents, the, um, the sudden depth changes, the slippery embankments, underwater debris, chemicals, cold water shock, sudden depth changes, hyperthermia, seizures, pollutants, the list was just endless. And I was going into schools and children had absolutely no idea and still to this day kids have no idea. I have literally just done a news article yesterday about children going back to the quarry where my son died. Um, now that's been inactive for nine years. Nine years kids haven't gone back there because they've remembered my son. And now, nine years on, kids are walking past my son's memorial to go and risk their own lives. Um, so, like I said, I went into schools and I started educating people, but one woman can't educate the world, but one woman can't change the world. So I started um, contacting fire services, police services. I, um, I talked to anybody, literally, that will listen. As Susie will tell you, I will talk anywhere. And for as long as you'll give me, you'll have to tell me to shut up. <laughs> um, but the point that I'm trying to make, I suppose, is that without the education, these children are going to continue to die. And it's not just children, it's adults as well. Um, parents need to understand about the dangers in and around open water. I openly admit that I had no idea. I, I was totally oblivious. I hold my hands up, I take the blame. Not 100% because Dylan made that choice to go swimming that day, but I'm his mum and I should have known. I should have been able to teach him and I didn't and I let him down and I can't change that. What I can change is the things that I'm doing now. Like I say, I've gone into schools. I've made um, a campaign called Doing It For Dylan. And um, I go into schools and I talk about what I've just talked about. And I talk about the educational side of water safety. So um, like how you can rescue people, what you should do in an emergency. If you see somebody in trouble in water, um, I talk about life um, throw lines. These are literally like 15, 20 pounds. And for this kind of one, you can get a much 
better one for around about £25. And honestly, it's £25 well spent just to have in the boot of your car, just in case you ever come across somebody that's in trouble. Because time is of the essence. Our water rescue units aren't necessarily on the doorsteps of these bodies of open water. Um, so for Dylan, the nearest place was 22 miles away. He had no chance. He had no, when, when that call was made to say that he was in trouble, he had no chance. Um, there's also other things you can buy, such as life jackets. If you do want to partake in, in going into water or you want to let your kids go into water, that will save your child's life. That will save your life for 50 quid. Fifty pound. Um, I'm not here to tell people not to go swimming in open water. That's never been my aim. My aim is to tell people to only go swimming where it's safe to do so. Um, so go to a lifeguarded beach. I have a very simple motto, which is no lifeguard, no swimming. And if that could be as as like the rule of um, stop, look and listen, or drop, stop, drop and roll, um, maybe kids would pick it up a little bit more. You know, the educational side of things. I've won umpteen awards and that's from very local level as in your local radio station, um, you know, uh, South Ribble Awards, that kind of thing. Um, right up to national awards, I won um, a British Empire medal from the Queen last year, um, which I've actually brought for you to have a little nosy at because I don't get to show it off very often, but there you go. <laughs> um, so I won that. Um, I have met Prince William to go and help launch the Tidal Thames, which is to try and help prevent suicide on the River Thames. Um, I've been and met Princess Eugenie. I've worked with some absolutely amazing people and I've met people that will be my friends forever. But honestly, I'd give every single one of those friends back and I would... Um, unmeet all those people and I would give all those awards back just to have my little boy home and just to go back to normal. It's not it's not just my, me that has to live with this. My husband, my children lost the brother that day, but they also lost the mum and dad because we've never been the same. We can't possibly give our children the same now as what we did when we was an okay, normal family. Um, and I say that lightly because I don't know what normal is anymore. Uh, but we was happy and we had everything. And it wasn't a case of not knowing what you've got till it's gone. I knew what I had. I knew I had the perfect family. I knew I had the perfect children. I just never thought it would be snatched away from me. A need for people to to take away from this um, and speak to their loved ones, to talk to their children, to talk to their, their children's schools, um, to talk to anybody and everybody about this situation that we face. I know at the moment we're facing a huge pandemic where, you know, we're in lockdown, we're not allowed to see family members. Drowning is a huge pandemic that's been going on for, for, for centuries. And as our government does nothing about it, our government doesn't put in place water safety for schools. And I don't care what anybody says, you know, sometimes some people come back to me and they're like, you know, my ch children's school do do water safety because they jump into the pool with the pyjamas on. I'm sorry, but that doesn't equip you for if you fall into a canal on a bike ride or a jog. Um, they're the highest risk category, believe it or not, for drowning um, statistics. Runners, walkers, joggers, um, bike riders. I mean, they're not even people that you'd contemplate drowning. They're not even people that you'd think about as drowning statistics, but they are the highest um, young men are a very high risk category as well, teenagers, um, young adults, but increasingly, which is very concerning, um, young girls are, get, are more and, getting more and more into this risque behaviour, if you will. Um, when I was talking at the beginning of, of what I was saying about the quarry and the kids going back to the quarry, I've actually found out it was three young girls that were there in bikinis. It was the first hot day in weeks and they've gone to a quarry in bikinis. I mean, the 13, 14, 15 year old girls, what? What chance do they have? I mean, they might have made it out lucky this time, 
and the parents are so lucky that these kids manage to get home. Next time they might not have that same luck. I'm working with the police, like I said, and I'm working with the fire service. So we're trying to actually get this particular quarry dyed black. And we're coming up with new ways and new incentives all the time of trying to prevent unwanted swimmers in, in places. Um, it's 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 a really difficult uh, a really difficult um, subject to approach because so many people like one don't want to know about it two are oblivious to it and three just think it'll never happen to them until sadly it does happen to them or somebody that they love. I've I've met families um, who have never got their children back. You know their children are lost at sea. How how do you live with that? How do you cope with that? People often ask me what's the hardest thing to deal with what's the hardest thing to cope with after a bereavement of a child um, and honestly the hardest thing for me is not being able to fix a problem mums are supposed to be able to fix everything aren't we we're supposed to be able to to fix the world, the cuts, the bruises, the hospital visits, the up all night while you're sick. I can't fix this for my children. I can't make it right. I can't change it. I can't, I can't put anything, uh, I can't make anything different. I can't tell my children that tomorrow's going to be okay or next week's going to be okay because I don't know. We take it one day at a time. If that's too much, then we do it one minute at a time. I love Unique Ladies because you empower me so much. Um, I don't think you really understand, Susie, how much you have empowered me. But you you allowed me to come to your, your networking sessions. You allowed me to talk to your ladies. And so much has come from that. I've, I've got people that message me to make sure that I'm okay. I've got people that, that want to donate to me on a regular basis. I've got people that want to help me build websites. I've got people that want to help me become a charity. Everything I've done to this point, I've funded myself. So it has been really difficult. I'm not ashamed to say I've slept in cars to teach at schools. I'm ashamed of our government that, that I've slept in cars to teach in schools, but I'm not ashamed that I've done that because our government doesn't step up. Our government doesn't see it as an issue. I go to my local MP and because he's the House leader, I don't have a voice in Parliament. Because he's the House leader, I don't get anywhere. I, my voice is, it may as well be silent. Um, because he does, he's not allowed an opinion in the house. Um, and I think that personally is wrong. But I, I've even contemplated moving house to be able to get my voice heard in Parliament. I should have to move from my home where I made precious memories with my son to get my voice heard about his death. That shouldn't have to happen, but it does if, um, unless Lindsay Oil isn't the house leader anymore or somebody else gets put in his place, I don't know. I just know it's not fair that I don't have a, a voice. Um, things are changing slowly, albeit slowly. We do have a plan in place from 2016 to 2026 to try and half the water-related deaths. Um, and we are on track for that. Um, if you look at the statistics, if you look at what the... the the official advice is out there but honestly coming from somebody that really knows they're just hiding the stats we're still losing the 600 people they're just putting them in different categories and um, lowering the numbers for accidental deaths so it looks like we are reducing the numbers but actually we're not reducing the numbers at the moment um, we lose like I say 600 lives roughly every year if you can take one thing away from today's meeting, one thing today away from today's session, um, it would be that these two pieces of equipment are lifesavers. And this, they're, they're literally a couple of pounds, like they, they literally cost, you know, next to nothing. Um, I really would con consider getting one and having one in the back of your car um, and talking to your children, talking to your loved ones you can share my message with one other person um, that means it's a little bit like networking I suppose but if you can share my message with one other person it means that I've reached double the amount of people every time I speak to somebody and they share my message so it would be really really fantastic if you could do that um, and if you could leave um, a message I'm doing it for Dylan 
because of what because I do everything for free, because I do everything going to schools free of charge and stuff like that, everything that I do is via word of mouth really. So if people say that my talk was absolutely rubbish, then obviously a school's not going to invite me in. If you say actually that talk was informative, you educated me, um, I learned a lot from it, then schools look at that and then, you know, obviously inevitably is that they invite me in. At the moment in this pandemic, I am doing Zoom uh, meetings like this. I have been invited to a few places, but not really schools, more like um, Prince's Trust and stuff like that. Um, but I will, like I said, talk to anybody. So if anybody has anybody that they would like me to speak to, first and foremost, then please get in touch. Um, but really, my main message is keep your loved ones safe. Um, remember that golden rule, no lifeguard, no swimming. And really understand that. Remember Dylan, you know, if you're ever near any open water, remember your surroundings. Be aware all the time. Um, another really, really quick tip that I would just like to give you is download the what three words app and it's not just for drowning this it's for anything and get your children to download it it's what as in w-h-a-t the number three and then words um it basically it's an app that has um it's put the whole world into three meter by three meter squares and each three meter square is represented by three random words. A lot of the emergency services are using it now. So like if I put mine on now, for instance, I'm just gonna do it just to tell you what the, just to give you an idea of what it's like. So if I click on my, um, sorry, let me just find it. Um, what three words are we about you? Um, oh. I can't find it. Anyway, I, you click on the what three words app and it basically, so it might say, for instance, cushion, curtain, cup. You give those three random words to the police and the police can literally pinpoint you or the ambulance or emergency services. Police, they can pinpoint you to a three meter location. So if you're in a car accident and you literally just, you can just click your, your link and it tells you these three words. Um, I can't praise that app enough. It's already saved lives where water's concerned. It's already saved lives where car accidents accidents are concerned especially in remote areas you know you're stuck on a long air road and you're trying to tell the police or the emergency services where you are what three words will do that for you um, it's been a, I'd say a pleasure but it's very upsetting to do these and it's always very nerve-wracking um, but it has been really nice to meet you all and hear all your stories um, I, I, you just fascinate me every time I come on I meet new people uh, like I've already said Susie you empower me so much unique ladies is something very very special and empowers a lot of women to do things that maybe they couldn't have done before thank you well, very welcome Becky thank you it doesn't get any easier does it sharing that story it doesn't get easier but you're doing it brilliantly and I'm sure everybody that's listened will be giving the kids a, an extra big hug and telling them a little bit more about cold water shock. And also anybody that's got connections within schools, you know, if you can share with um, Becky um, any connections that you might have. You're, you're on LinkedIn, aren't you? Yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. So you're on LinkedIn. So she, um, Rebecca Ramsey on LinkedIn. Um, also, there's a, a Doing It For Dylan Facebook page. So, you know, please all like that. Go and have a look on there. And you'll see clips of Becky on there doing the various reports. You'll, next time she's on Granada Report, she'll be able to say, oh, I've got her in a booth network, which is what I do quite regularly. And I've got to say, Becky, when I saw that um, thing, was it yesterday? Yeah, the, and the kids are being back to that quarry. I was just, I got a goosebumps. It's like uh, history repeating itself. Honestly, so, I, I'm I, I'm up to here with it. I'm like, I, I don't really know what else to do. The police have been like talking to me about getting this dye put in. It's like a vegetable dye. It's not harmful to the environment or anything like that. It just dyes the water black, makes it look uninviting. Um, and the fact that we've been in such close talks about, I mean, I was on Crime Watch Roadshow literally last week about this quarry. And then this week this happens. In, in some ways, I feel like, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth but then in other ways I feel like we're just on to the next generation and I can't take it personally I can't take, if I took every death personally which I, I very much did at the beginning I very much every drowning I felt like if I could have just got to them first I could have saved them and and I've realized now nine years on that that's not actually true do you know what I mean 
You are superwoman, but you're not super superwoman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not oh. superwoman. <laughs> Let me ask you that Crime Watch um, road show that you were doing. Is that something that we're going to be able to see on TV at some stage? Yeah, so it was on on Friday. So if you watch on BBC iPlayer, um, okay. it's I think it's episode five. Um, uh, that but they, it actually aired on Friday. I'm sure it was episode five because it was well, it's Friday anyway, whatever Friday's was, but it was definitely Friday that it was aired. Um, and it's about a five six minute clip, and it's just me talking about the quarry and the police officer that actually arrived first, um, who jumped in for Dylan and how it affected him. I mean, yeah. he's um, he suffers from PTSD and stuff now, and he said that colleagues from work have left because of seeing Dylan. You know, I suppose that image of you know a child is something that nobody you nobody signs up for that, do they? Nobody signs up. For that. No, I, I Thank you so much for sharing. Um, are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Becky? No. This is quite nice. Nice. <laughs> just, I, I've got a, a bit of a, a comment, but also just thanks for sharing that because I think it's um, it's something that um, resonates with me because I come from Cornwall right. so it's a really different situation but through lockdown where the RNLI weren't supporting the beaches because they weren't sure what they could do and then the number of accidents that happened yeah. um, and my children know that every year before they and their friends go into the sea I show them the rip currents diagram yeah. And yeah. I explain to them how to get out of a rip current, which is very different to your situation, but yeah. it's still the, the danger of water. Yeah, without a doubt. I talk about rip currents quite a lot when I'm in schools and stuff yeah. because it's, you know, that, that's probably the first place as a family that you go to open water that you actually allow your children to go and get in that water. And, you know, you don't really think much of it. They're just paddling. And, and it, like you say, these rip currents are literally mm -hmm. deadly. They can take you... I, right out to sea within seconds minutes yeah. you know um, and uh, the lifeguard problem was a lot of it was that we didn't have enough well I say we um, I, I count the water safety world as a whole but we didn't have any training because of the COVID they didn't we weren't able to train lifeguards so the media did put a lot out there like saying that um, lifeguards weren't supporting this or they weren't doing that but a lot of it was that they didn't know what they could have done yeah. like say um, yeah. and they just didn't have the support they hadn't been trained you know there was it's 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 absolutely horrific how many beaches are not manned by lifeguards we only have actually one in the whole of the UK that's manned 365 days a year and it's in Crosby I believe Liverpool um, which is crazy you know if, if it were going to be any you'd think it would be one like down Cornwall where it's yeah, yeah. sunny quite often you know yeah. um but no it's it's Cornwall has its fair shares mm -hmm. of deaths but sadly down Cornwall um often it's not people that are from the area because I know Cornwall's yeah. quite well educated you you are a you know you're a coastal area and, and you do yeah. find yeah. a lot that coastal areas are a little bit more water wise or a little bit more mm -hmm. water aware um but then we're not we're really not and and people don't take into account that inland drownings do occur do you know what I mean? It's that simple. Can I, can I ask a question about the, the water parks as well? Like uh, my daughter, I've got a 15-year-old daughter and, and her thing um, once she was allowed to see friends was to go to Sail Water Park. Yes. Now, my assumption is that it, it's not that deep and therefore not that cold. But I know somebody who's gone open water swimming in Sail Water Park and become really ill because of that. Yeah. Um, so, would you say so, there's danger there? Yeah, without a no matter what, no matter where the open water is, there is a danger. So your children can protect themselves by wearing a wetsuit, um, which obviously I'm presuming they're going to do that, a buoyancy aid. That's what's going to protect them. But actually, if you Google Sail Water Park, a young man died there literally four or five weeks ago. Um, granted, the park wasn't open at the time. He'd gone in when the park wasn't open. But just to give you an idea that, yes, obviously that water still holds those same dangers um, as any other water. It's it's um, it's RLSS approved, which means that RLSS have gone out and they've looked at it and they've said, yeah, yeah, the floats are fine. You know, it's manned by lifeguards. You've got wetsuits, you've got buoyancy aids and all this, but it still ultimately holds the same um, dangers. It's it's really strange, but at Manchester we've got um, 
Salford Keys and on one side of the keys I can be doing literally demonstrations with the fire service and the police service saying not to go swimming in this open water and pointing at the open water and on the other side of the bridge we've got open water swimming clubs swimming it's so contradictory and this is one of the big problems where kids don't know because what in one breath we're saying don't do it and in the next breath we're advertising it on telly that it's the biggest growing sport it's like in some ways i kind of describe it as um when you learn to drive that doesn't equip you to be able to drive a formula one car um, when you cross the road that doesn't mean that you should re necessarily be going and playing on the motorway do you know what i mean it's it's different skill set that you need so when you've passed your test if you want to drive a formula one car you need to go and learn to drive that formula one car it's not the same as driving your ford focus or whatever do you know what i mean um so i think a lot of it is that and it, it it's education that is the biggest thing if we could educate children age appropriate from very early on all the way through we wouldn't see half the drownings that we see now thanks thank you thanks emma and um, wahida did you have a question um i was just going to say how brave she was and how transparent she was and and i appreciate you speaking about that uh, unfortunately we um uh, recently events took place uh, on the day of uh, Eid celebration in Bradford an 18 year old passed away in a similar situation recently married went for a swim when he went out with his friend celebrating Eid his mother was suffering from corona she was in uh, the ICU and I was just typing it up for Rebecca that she she didn't wake up yeah she didn't yeah. find out I, I shared the story yeah. I'm doing it for um, it, it's something that I personally feel that I love Bradford, I love Bradford people, but I sometimes feel we're very different from each other. And I love to to take Rebecca there and share that story and be able to get into the schools there through somebody who has the links to be able to educate. It's really important. It, and it, it, I think that the education needs to go to the I always believe that it needs to go to the mothers first. Yeah. It needs to go to them. The parents need to know. And yeah. it needs to pass it on, be passed on onto the next generation. So I definitely, I, what I was typing it was, I'm definitely going to get in touch with you. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. If, you book in, um, if you book in Rebecca as a speaker over there, let me know. And if I can get that at the same time, I'll pick her up and bring her over. That'll save the job. Oh. Be brilliant. I'm actually That'd going be brilliant. to North Yorkshire on the 28th. I'm going to speak to the fire service because they do actually want to put something in place um so i'll keep you informed on that Aida. thank you that would be brilliant and my yeah. number's on there but brilliant. yeah do get into it. i'm hoping we'll get back into the to the space again soon yeah yeah i mean there is lots of videos out there to show please pass on my condolences to um you know family members and friends if you know of them um and my contact details sometimes people just need somebody that that knows you know somebody that understands i get people that ring me up that have lost children or loved ones like all the time um and i just like to put that out there that, you know that they're not on their own you know i read this story of this young man and it was tragic that we found out the day after he just recently got married only a few weeks been married yeah um yeah I, I cried a lot of tears um as i do for every drowning victim every single person marriage there was a contact with people and his mother picked up the COVID-19 and then, and then she passed away a few weeks later. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Yeah. Okay, thanks Wahida. Thanks for your, your question there. Um, thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Um, we're almost at, at the end of the session. Um, does anyone have any questions for um, either for me, for Sue, for Rachel about Boost or about any anything related to the session or networking? No? You've all been very yeah. yeah. I have that effect, don't I, Susie? I always shut the room up. <laughs> I've put our contact details in the chat anyway. So for any businesses that, you know, any of you want to get in touch with us. But can I just say something to Rebecca as well? I've got a client who runs a business in Leyland, so it's not too far away from us. Um, and they deliver um, training to like rescue training, um, oh, right. first aid, medical rescue, that kind of thing. So, right. do you want to have a chat with them? Because yeah, I'm that'd sure be brilliant. That, yeah. you know, there's something that you can yeah, do together. Yeah, that'd um, be fantastic. So, I'll um, 
I haven't got your details. You, I've got your, I'll get your email address off Rachel because she sent it for you to log in. Um, yeah. And I'll do an introductory email to yourself. Um, and um, a guy called Stephen um, at the company called ATAC Group. All right. I don't know if you've come across No, them. I've never heard of it. It's, it's strange, isn't it? Sometimes it can literally be on your doorstep and yeah. you don't even know they exist. He's an, ex, uh, he's an ex-police officer and he ah. set up this business with um, a doctor. Uh, so they've like, formed a relationship, set the business up. And like I said, they do first aid, um, medical rescue training, all that kind of thing. Oh, so they're, they're really good company. Yeah, um, no, that would be I'll, fantastic. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to each other. On yeah, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thanks everybody for coming on to this session. Um, if you've not registered for the Boost Lancashire newsletter, then again, go on the Boost Lancashire website and register for the newsletter and you'll get that on a, is it a, a monthly? Monthly basis, monthly, yeah, to get it yeah. every month, yeah. So every month you'll get a list of all the, um, the Zooms, the training that they're doing and everything that's available and you sometimes get um, updates on what what's happened with the businesses that have, have worked with Boost. So Unique Ladies have worked with Boost and we did a feature, I think it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just showing that, that, you know, from from an idea that you've grown to this and, you know, and we all, I think everybody that's worked on Boost always wants to give a little bit back. So it's really useful to get the newsletter and then, um, you know, have a coffee with Sue when you can. Yeah, I'm always around. <laughs> When you and well, well, you are now because you can't be on holiday. No, <laughs> please don't say that. Don't you know say what, that. Susan? My uncle had paid for an all inclusive at end of month and it's been cancelled. I'm gutted. I've not been on holiday for about 10 years. Oh, it'll, you'll enjoy it more when it happens. No, it happen. no. Well, he's found a girlfriend now, so I'm thinking he might not take me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll finish off there. Thanks, every, everybody, for coming on board. Um, yeah, stay safe, you. and we'll see you at another session of Boost or at a Unique Ladies, something like that.